Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to continue talking about smart pointers, and we're going to talk about shared pointers. So let's go ahead and dive in, look at some examples, and talk about what exactly a shared pointer is. So the idea with a shared pointer has to do with, well, one of the points of using raw pointers in the first place, this idea that we could have multiple pointers. So that is to say I could have pointer one here and pointer two and they could have some resource here that has been allocated on the stack or the heap, and we can point to both of them. And again, this is a really powerful idea because as we update whatever is in this resource here, maybe it's just an integer or some other interesting data type, then we can make sure that those updates are propagated to each of these pointers. And of course, for things like building data structures and so on. And if you've been following this series and previously watched and learned about unique pointer, we learned that unique pointer was a scoped pointer. That means that the lifetime of that pointer was, well, within the curly braces or the block scope from which it was initialized. And it would automatically reclaim the memory. You wouldn't have to worry about what delete function to use. It could be moved. And there's some other cool things you can do with custom deleters that I may or may not have talked about, but you can uh, check out on your own here. So that was unique pointer, one of the first types that was introduced in modern C++. And the second one, which we're going to focus on, though, is this idea of a shared pointer today. So let's go ahead and again, include the memory library and talk about shared pointer here. And again, the goal of a smart pointer is to make our life easy so we don't have to manually perform resource management that is manually call new and delete. So let me go ahead and put the point here. So helps us avoid calling new and delete. All right, so let's go ahead and write an example out so that we can understand how it works. Now, again, I'm going to create this user defined type here. This is just some class which is going to print out the message that the type was created or the type was destroyed automatically from the constructor and the destructor. And later on in the series, we'll talk about classes or feel free to check out any resources if you need brushing up on that idea. All right, so let me make this just a little bit bigger here and go ahead and create a shared pointer. So it's going to look very similar to what we did previously with unique pointer. So I'll create a shared pointer the actual type here. And let's just go ahead and give this a name here. I'm just going to call this pointer one here so we can keep track of it. And then I'm actually going to need to create some sort of resource here. And I'll go ahead and use make shared to do this. And it's going to be our user defined type and no arguments in the constructor. So let me go ahead and compile this program here and go ahead and run it just so you can see what happens. And well, at this point, it's going to look pretty familiar to what has been done with unique pointer. Again, within this block scope, these curly braces, the pointer was created and then destroyed for us. So it was taken care of for us. Now, let's add a little bit more here to see what the sort of point here is. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this line here and create a second pointer here. And what I'm going to do this time, though, is have pointer 2, point 2, pointer 1 here. And recall that this line was not allowed last time with our unique pointer because, well, we could only have one thing pointing to a given resource at a time here. So it could either be pointer 1 could hold the resource or pointer 2 could hold the resource. But as the name implies, shared pointers allow us to share and have multiple things pointing to the same resource. So let's go ahead and try this. And I'll go ahead and run this. And then again, we'll see, well, we have our type that's been created and destroyed here. So this is allowed this time here. So again, I'll just recompile it, rerun it, and we can see it's working. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek at CPP reference here. I'm on the shared pointer page just so you can see a little bit about what shared pointers are about here. Now, there is a key difference again with the shared pointers, this ability to have multiple pointers holding the same resource. And this allows us to, again, think a little bit differently about the object lifetime. That is, if I have multiple things pointing to the actual pointer, so in our uh, diagram here, 
it might happen that P1 is in the same scope as this resource, but P2 could be in a totally different scope. So sometimes folks like to illustrate this with little diagrams here, which I'll draw, which means over time, I might have this resource P1 and it exists for a little bit here. And I'll just go ahead and draw an arrow. And then at some point I create P2 and it also exists for some time. Now these are both pointing to the same resource here, but this resource here will only get deallocated once the last thing that points to it at this point in time, so later on as our program executes, is finished. Then at this point, resource, and let me just draw an arrow, and I'll put a dot here, resource is destroyed. Okay, and that's where the automatic management helps. So how does this work or what's the mechanism? Well, these smart pointers, and that is the shared pointers, are actually being kept track of. That is a reference count is being kept for a particular resource. Now, this is actually in something when we create our pointer here, uh, this will actually be the actual pointer to the data here. So I'll actually draw this here and I'll draw this in here. And then we have this control block that I'm just going to draw an arrow to from both of these shared pointers. And I'll just abbreviate this control. Well, let me actually write it out here, block. And what it's actually doing is for this particular resource, so perhaps there's some link to it, it's keeping track of how many things are pointing to it. So in this case, two, and that is called the reference count. So for folks coming from other languages like Swift or maybe Java, maybe you've heard this term reference counting, and that's why you don't have to manage your memory uh, so closely because they're, this is being done automatically behind the scenes for you when you allocate memory. Okay, so that's a little bit of the idea. You can read a little bit more about control blocks, but we can actually see this reference count from our shared pointer if we like. So again, these smart pointer has the idea of a shared ownership. And often we think about it, as I've tried to illustrate here, in terms of the actual lifetime of this resource. So sometimes it might be owned by P1 only, sometimes by both P1 and P2 from this uh, duration here, and sometimes only by uh, P2 if we look at the latter part of this line here. Okay, so that's the idea. And let's go ahead and look at some functions here just so we can, again, get some intuition as to what's going on here. Um, and that is the use count here. So let's go ahead and print this off. And I'll go ahead and uh, for our pointer one, let's go ahead and print out the uh, use count. And I'll just go ahead and print this out. Use count equals And let's go ahead and put an end line there. I'll compile this. Um, oops. Let me actually make sure that this is a function call. So I'll put the parentheses here. And let's go ahead and compile this now. And I'll run it. And we can see that the use count is 2 at this point. Now, in order to just demonstrate perhaps how this is working or maybe make it a little bit more interesting, well, let me actually also print out the use count for pointer two here, uh, just so you can see what's going on here. And well, they're both pointing to the same resource. So that's what it's actually counting. It has nothing to do really with uh, pointer one or pointer two. It's just that the resource that they both point to, which is this one instance of this user defined type that was created is what's being incremented. Now, in order to, again, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap this um, in a block scope here. And then I'll print out the use count at each of the um, cases here. Um, so let me go ahead and do this here. And I'm going to make this bigger just so you can see everything on one line. So essentially what I'm doing is creating our shared pointer. Then in a new scope, so this could be in a new scope within this function or perhaps some other function call where you're passing your shared pointer around. Um, I share the resource, our reference count is updated, then, uh, and let me put this right at the curly brace, then pointer two 
which we can see is allocated here on the stack. That means it's only going to exist within these curly braces is freed. Then we check our updated reference count. Okay. And let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller and let's go ahead and recompile this. I'll show it on this side here. And what I want you to do before I actually run this is just check with yourself this idea that you understand, well, what's the reference count going to be here, regardless if I print out pointer two or pointer one, and see that that verifies uh, your understanding here. So let's actually, again, recompile this, and I'll give this a run. And you can see that this use count is decremented. Okay, so at this point here, I've got two things that are pointing to this resource. And then once I leave this scope, this pointer has been released. It no longer exists because it's out of scope and our count goes by one. Now also notice, and it's important to keep in mind that the destructor is only called once and the constructor is only called once. So at this point here at line 22, again, it has nothing to do with calling a destructor twice or anything. There's just one resource and C++ with this smart pointer, the shared pointer here, is just keeping track of how many things are pointing to this particular resource. And if it's more than one, then we need to keep it alive. But as soon as that's not true, so let's go ahead and uh, wrap this uh, in just one more block scope. Uh, I'll do this right here. And I'll go ahead and just print something out here. Uh, we should see the destructor call before this line. Okay. Uh, and that's the idea here. And I'll just put an end line here. Okay. So just so everyone can see here, again, this is the scope where our actual data is alive here. Okay. Between uh, here and here. Okay. So let's actually just compile this one more time and I'll give it a run here. And again, you can see that our resource has been reclaimed as soon as it's no longer needed. So that's a really powerful and cool idea with shared pointers. Now, just a few notes here on the shared pointer here, just so you can see what's going on here. And we'll wrap things up here. Um, again, one of the things to keep in mind is um, the reference count is thread uh, safe here is thread safe. So often I'll see folks ask about that. Uh, this value that I return is going to be thread safe and the uh, value is being atomically updated. So you don't have to worry about that. Now that's not to say you could do some weird stuff and your actual data here, you could be accessing with multiple threads and get data races and those kind of things. But uh, just to say that this use count is actually something uh, reliable. So you'll know when something can be uh, destroyed or not. The other thing that I'll note is you'll notice that I used make shared here again, which is a factory function. This is a similar thing that we did with our unique pointer and for the same reason that it's a little bit cleaner. You don't have to worry about calling new. Um, and this is also a little bit safer um, if there is some exception. Uh, that would occur while this object has being allocated, you could actually catch that versus if you just call new and have that uh, raw call to the, the new function. Now, shared pointers themselves aren't going to be perfect. You could do something weird. You could get cyclic uh, behavior where you point, say, P2 to P1 and P1 to P2. Um, so you do have to be a little bit careful uh, with what you're doing and think about what that would do with the reference count. Uh, but overall, they're a really safe tool to be using and a way that you can improve the safety of your code as opposed to just using raw pointers. So folks, with that said, I hope this was a useful introduction to shared pointers. We've now looked at in this series, unique pointers and shared pointers, and there's a third type that we'll need to look at in a future lesson. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that. And if there was something interesting you found in this lesson or something you didn't understand, make sure you comment below so we can take care of that. And we'll see you next time.